Hey everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on Leaving Cert Project Map Strand 5. Today we're going to be looking at how we can classify functions as being injective, surjective or bijective. Uh, this is a topic for higher level only. It's also one of those topics that people can find a little bit confusing or wordy. So uh, hopefully we can clarify what all the definitions mean and be able to identify functions as being either injective, surjective or bijective by the end of this video. The first category of functions I want to have a look at are injective functions. On this slide here, we have two examples of real life function machines that take in an input to produce an output. On the top here, I have a juicer as my function. If I want to produce orange juice with this juicer, as in I want orange juice to be my output, then obviously my input has to be oranges. There's no way I could input another fruit into my juicer and expect to get orange juice as my output. However, if we take a look at the second example I have here, where my function is an electricity generating station, I actually have a few options for my inputs to produce the desired output, which is electricity. In a generating station, you need a fuel source in order to produce steam to turn a turbine. But I don't just have one option of what I could use to produce this steam. I could use coal or peat or oil, for example. So unlike the fruit juicer, the function can generate the same output from more than one input. In terms of function terminology, then, we say that the juicer is an injective function, whereas the generating station is not an injective function. So here we have a more official definition of an injective function. An injective function, which is also called a one-to-one -one function, will never map different inputs to the same output. We could also phrase that slightly differently and say that an injective function will never map distinct elements of its domain to the same element in its codomain. Remember that the domain is just a set of inputs and the codomain is a set of possible outputs. Really, all we mean is that you can't get the same output by subbing in two or more different inputs. Like we saw in the last slide, we couldn't get orange juice from our juicer by using different types of fruits. The only input could be oranges, so the juicer was injective. Let's move away from real life examples then and have a look at some functions that we're used to. On the left here, I have a linear function, y equals x plus 4. And on the right, I have a quadratic function, y equals x squared. So how could I tell if either of those functions are injective? Remember that injective just means that we can't get the same output from different inputs. So let's say I wanted to get an output of 4 from my functions. We need to determine if there's only one way to do this or if there is more than one way that we can get a 4. So if we have a look at the linear function first, you can see that if we want to get 4 as our output, this is where y is 4 on our graph, the only way we can do that is by subbing in 0 for x. Whereas if we move over to the quadratic function and we want 4 to be our output, there's two places where the y value of the function is 4. We can get a 4 by subbing in 2, but similarly we can get a 4 by subbing in minus 2. This means that there are two possible inputs which yield the same output value of 4. And why does that happen? Well, because our function is just y equals x squared. And when you square a real number, the result is always positive. So both plus and minus 2 will give you a plus 4. We have two input values associated with every output value for a quadratic function like this. And that's what gives it its characteristic symmetric u-shape. So this function, therefore, is not injective because we have two input values associated with each output value. Here we have a really simple test that we can use to tell if a function is injective or not. It's called the horizontal line test for injectivity. Basically, we place the ruler horizontally onto our graph and we move it up and down vertically to see if the ruler ever touches the graph more than once at any position. If it does, 
that means that the function is not injective, since we have found an output that can be obtained from more than one input value. On this cubic function on the right, we see that initially the ruler only touches the graph once. Suddenly though, it touches the graph in two places at once. And if we keep moving it upwards, it will touch the graph in three places at once. This means that this cubic function is not injective. In some places, we have um, three input values associated with the one output. On the x-axis here, we have two input values associated with the same output of y equals zero. So we cannot say that this function is injective. If we use the horizontal line test on a linear function, for example, the ruler would only touch the graph once at every y position. So we would conclude that the linear function was injective. OK, we've got three final examples here, so I'd recommend pausing the video and testing yourself and see if you can figure out if each of these functions are injective or not. OK, so I'll reveal the answers now. So A and C are injective and B is not. So I'll just run through quickly why this is the case. So in the first example, we have the exponential function. And what we could do is we could use the horizontal line test. And no matter where you draw a horizontal line or where you place the ruler, it would only ever cross the graph in one place. So therefore, it has to be injective. Another hint is that this exponential function is always increasing. It has no turning points. And a function like that that's always increasing or always decreasing will have to be injective. OK, moving on to example B there, we have a modulus or absolute value function, and that's indicated by the straight brackets here. So the absolute value just means that we only take the positive value. So if we input minus three for x, for example, that means that our output is positive three. And we can see that there, y is three. That means then if we wanted an output of three, we could obtain it in two ways. We could sub in minus three as we saw there, but we could also just sub in positive three to begin with because the absolute value of a positive number is still just a positive number. We could have used the horizontal line test as well, of course, and you would have seen that there's a lot of places where a horizontal line would touch the graph in more than one place. So therefore, that function cannot be injective. Example C here is a bit of a trick question because maybe you saw this saddle point here and thought that the graph was flat at this point. And if the graph was flat at this point, then if you drew a horizontal line along the x-axis, then it will be touching the graph in more than one place. But a saddle point isn't actually flat. It's, it's approaching flatness. So if you were to take um, a point on either side of kind of where the saddle point is centered, you can see that the saddle point is centered at 0, 0 here. But if you were to take, let's say, where x is 0 0.2 and to sub that into our function, we wouldn't get an output of 0. If you sub in 0 0.2, we'd get 0 0.2 to the power of 5, which is in fact 1 over 100,000, which is obviously a very, very small number. And that's why it looks like it's 0 on the picture. That's why it looks like this line is flat. So really, in this case, you have to use the function as well, the equation that's given to help you if you're not really sure what's going on at something like this, something like a saddle point. Now, another um, hint here would be the fact that this function is always increasing. It doesn't have any turning points. So because of that, uh, that's an indication that it is injective, just like we saw in the example a here with the exponential function. 
So just keep an eye, on, eye out for questions like that where you've got something like a saddle point and just make sure that if you're not sure from the graph to play around with the equation a bit uh, to figure out if, if the function is injective or not.